We have Berkeley Big Game 40 pound fishing line on all of these reels. Very, very, very tough stuff. Really good line for striper fishing and blue fishing because the line will take an incredible amount of hits. You very abrasive with it, even without leader line. Right. As a matter of fact, we use 40 pound big game for, for leader line a lot of times, uh, especially for rock fishing. Really good. But anyway, uh, we're just running like some storm rigs. We've got a, actually a very large Rapala on this particular 30, and we've got him running way, way on out. You see the Bay Bridge Tunnel back there, the eastern shore? Yeah. That's where that lure is. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we've got another Rapala, and then right here close to the boat, we're running deep. We've got some mojos. We're taking a mojo right here on a split rig, yep. and then we've got a planer over here, which is about 15 feet down, and we're running a storm up shallow close to the boat. So that's it. we got the whole water column pretty much covered, and got a good tide just starting to run, so we should uh, we should be able to get something here pretty soon. What's the, uh, what's the depth on the Rapala on the outrigger? That actually is probably only about four feet down. That covers any, a lot of these fish like to feed top water. These rockfish will come in here and they'll just boom, they'll just go right to the top and they'll feed. So that pretty much is going to cover anything up top. And okay. we're really running a stretch 25, which is probably about 15 feet down. Look at that action, incredible. Actually, he's, he's, the lure's foul. And now look what we caught over here. Oh, we missed the swimming pole. We missed the swimming pole. <laughs> Uh, we now to go back and get the swimming pool. <laughs> Golly. All right, well, we got to circle around and get the pool. Did you get it, Mike? We got the pool. We got the pool? Okay. Uh, she's got holes in it. Oh, oh, no. We'll take it anyway. Jump on a live well. Yeah, this is our new live well. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the pool. We're cleaning up the bay today. Yeah. And we haven't caught any fish, but we got two nice lures, and the kids are going to love the new swimming pool. They always oh. said, Dad, we want a swimming pool. So now we got it. <laughs> Tina. This is Tina's pool. <laughs> For the dog. Okay, now let's go catch a fish. We got everything out. <laughs> we caught some wonderful fish today. Some water, yellow fish in them, and dogs. The average fish we're catching out here is 35 to 45. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Baugh. Today we'll take you on a magical mystery tour and also take you rock fishing in the Chesapeake Bay. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jim Baugh, and before I introduce today's special guest here on Jim Baugh Outdoors, we're gonna let everybody at home guess where we are. You think they have any idea? <laughs> Probably not. No. Clue. Not with these things <laughs> all behind us, you know. No. <laughs> We've given them 10 seconds. You think you've guessed by now? Probably not. Probably well, not. you better get your friends and family. Call them on the telephone right now. Get mom and dad and get the popcorn because you're not going to believe what you're going to see. Some fascinating stuff. We're here. Our special guest is Mike Schwartz. How you doing, Mike? Wonderful, Archie. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> and tell them you're with Virginia Tech. I'm an aquaculture specialist for Virginia Tech, and we're here in uh, downtown Hampton at Virginia Tech's uh, Virginia Seafood Agricultural Research and Extension Center at 102 South King Street. And that's his, and right behind the Virginia Air and Space Center. Now, before we take the tour, we're going to do a complete tour of basically what this is, is research for farm raising, saltwater fish, cobia, flounder. What are the other fish that you do? Um, we're working with two species of flounder, a summer and a southern flounder. Uh, we're also working with cobia. Those are the three species that look like they have the best potential right now. Up and coming species, uh, black sea bass and mahi mahi are two. Even two hot mahi mahi. So think about it. What's never been able to really happen before uh, is to now be able to farm raise, farm raise your own saltwater fish. Yes. You always have to catch your tuna and your dolphin out in the Gulf Stream. But just think now, instead of raising chickens, you can raise your own dolphin. That's what correct. do you think? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, now, let's start the tour very quickly. What is this behind us? What is all this? 
Uh, what we have here is we're in our algae production room. Uh, and basically with marine fish, one of the problems they're difficult to raise is they have a 30 day life cycle where they have to eat live food and we have to feed the live food okay. and we feed algae to the live food. Okay, very good. So this is the algae room. This is the algae and room. And you have a whole center here, micro lab and everything. Yeah, we have micro lab uh, for, sea for servicing the seafood industry. And this is the aquaculture component of the program here at the center. Okay, well now before we take this tour, every, these are open to tours, right? People Absolutely, come down, come down, down anytime. anytime. Well, well, now this is the algae, what's next? Where do we go now, Mike? Well, from here okay. we're going to go to uh, where we do the live feeds production. Again, wow, this is the food to feed the, uh, to feed the marine zooplankton. The larval tanks, but uh, before we get to those, we'll come to the live feed. Okay, this is the live feed right here. Yeah. And uh, in here, as we mentioned, uh, the marine fish have generally, give or take, about a 30-day stage where they need live food. Here we produce it. On this side, we produce what are called rotifers, which are uh, microscopic marine zooplankton, and these are fed the algae from the previous room. Wow. And wow. we hold the rotifers in here at densities of about uh, 1 million per liter of water or about 4 million per gallon. And we'll go through, we'll go through about uh, anywhere from 50 to 70 million rotifers a day just in feeding those three small tanks that you saw outside wow. that we'll visit next. So then this right here, the food here, goes into these tanks outside. That is correct. Let's go look at those tanks. Okay. Incredible. Now, I was commenting about these doors earlier. Look at these. <laughs> this used to be an old clam and oyster plant. Yep. Very legendary to the city of Hampton. Look at those doors. These were, these were the old coolers where they stored their products. Now right here, we have three tanks. Yep. And inside these tanks are, do you have that cup that you can actually? Yep, we can give it a shot. Probably not be able to see it because they're so small. Would these be called fry? These are called fry right now. They're about four days old. And they're flounder? And these are flounder. And they were spawned from our hatchery. And again, they're at about four days old. They're getting ready to start eating rotifers. Okay. Uh, so in fact, I just started today to start putting rotifers in these tanks. I added about eight million per tank and I'll add another eight million this afternoon. These are Atlantic flounder. Atlantic flounder. Summer flounder. Summer flounder. Summer flounder. And the little teeny fry is about maybe that big. Yeah, it's about it's a millimeter small. long. Wow. Yeah. And, and you have three tanks? And we raise these. This is actually uh, um, as technical as marine aquaculture is right now. This is on a recirculating system. We continually recycle our water. And what that does is really allow you to take, take some of the technology that you'll see as we go through the other phase bearing systems. And we can take this technology and move it inland. We're, wow. not, we're not limited to constantly having you know, oh, sure, lots of seawater. Sure. Again, being able to farm raise them anywhere in the country. Farm wow. raise can, them by where your market is. Can you imagine farm raising by Mai in Kansas? Huh? How yeah. about it? Well, that's what will be happening five years, ten years from now. What's next, Mike? What's uh, next actually, we should probably take a look at the mamas and papas of these fish. Mom and dads? Uh, we got the eggs about a week ago from okay. here. Let's go into the next room. Wow. I don't know if they'll pick up on the camera. We have about 25, they average five pounds a piece. Uh, male and female flounder and what we do in this room knows it's a lot colder in here these fish yeah. are in winter right now we do what's called photothermal cycling and what that means is we will take the light and temperature that the fish is uh, exposed to in a year and squeeze it into about 120 days because they use light and temperature as a cue to develop and okay. then and then spawn their eggs so, so we do all that artificial rapidly uh, making it so they'll want to keep on basically spawning. That's correct. You know, to get more eggs. That's and then correct. the eggs are scummed off the top right here. Yep. You got them over here, and then they go in those tanks. And then they go into those then tanks. tanks to be fed. What's next on the tour, Mike? Uh, we will go, we will go to big, big where we take the fish after they come out of these tanks to our production floor. Okay. Ready? All right. Incredible, look at these tanks. And these are some of the recirculating tanks we have. Again, we raise uh, different types of fish in here. We also do some research in here, looking at different ways to pump the water, filter the water. We can do nutrition studies in here, temperature to find out what the right temperatures are. And these are all summer flounder. These are all summer flounder here. Again, we take the water from the center of the tank. Uh, the tank spins so it's self-cleaning. It comes up through a pump. It comes up through a bead filter. Filtered. 
where the bacteria naturally cleans the water and then it comes back into the and tank this again. Will be, again, this can go anywhere in the country. This can you don't go have anywhere. to be set up next to an ocean in the Chesapeake Bay. You can be in Iowa farm raising flounder for commercial. Right. Unbelievable. Yes. What's so fascinating about this, folks, is that uh, this is all in the research stage. This really has not happened yet commercially. This is the cuss on it probably five years from now or certainly ten years from now. It'll be just commonplace. You'll go get farm-raised yes. flounder, farm-raised yes. dolphin at your local grocer. Yeah. Unbelievable. We, and the quality of the food, the yeah. fillets are going to be incredible, aren't they? Yeah, it's a very high-quality product. Again, you know, the U.S. has a viable freshwater aquaculture industry with catfish, tilapia, right. a lot of the other fish you're familiar with. What we're starting in here is what we call mariculture or marine fin fish, uh -huh. and that is, as you mentioned, just on the cusp. It's just, just on, getting just, ready to take off. Uh, incredible. We've identified nutrition systems. And here. how old were those flounder? Uh, these are probably representative of about a six-month-old fish. Six-month-old. And what do we have in here? These are uh, some cobia. Again, we do some cobia research here. These are small the, cobia. These fish are about 50 days old. Only 50 days. The fascinating, the fascinating part with the cobia, not only is it a high-valued fish, um, it grows extremely, extremely rapidly, as do a lot of other offshore fish. Wow. Um, these fish are in a project right now off Puerto Rico, and from an egg they got 18 pounds in one year. Unbelievable. Uh, in the next tank, as Let's we walk down, next tank. the next tank you'll see cobia that are about six months old. Now and, this is uh, only we need to be careful so they'll, they might grab your hand if you stick your hand in the tank. Now can we feed them? You can put a little food on them. These are about six months old. They're about six or seven pounds. Look at those cobia. Hard to believe that a fish just six months old will be this big. Yeah, you, can, now, you, can, you can give them a little more. Now this is the fish, the very, very well-known popular fish here in Hampton that get up to 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds that they catch off of the piers, Buck Row and Grandview. And it's probably one of the best cobia locations in the Chesapeake Bay. Well, this is what they look like right here, born and bred right in the tank, right? That's correct. They and think, these cobia will come up and bite your finger if you let them. Uh, they'll, they'll think you're food. And again, you can see the floating pellets. Uh, that's some of the results of some of the nutrition work we've done here. Again, there's feed mills that make food just like uh, cat food and dog food, but it's made for fish. And the research we do on nutrition is used to make those pellets better. And so you'll end up with a pellet that's specific for a cobia. You'll have a pellet specific for a flounder, okay. specific for a black sea bass. It's called a species-specific species diet. Called, right. Which is probably what they do with chickens and horses exactly. and everything else and cows. But they've been doing that for 50 years, years, 100 years. We're just getting started. Here. We're just getting started. Now let's look at this tank over here. We have one more tank. And this is the flounder tank, right? Yep, these are southern flounder. Uh, again, they're very similar and you can catch both here in the bay. We're at the northern region of the southern flounder and the southern region of the summer flounder. What's interesting with this fish is uh, this fish can go to completely fresh water. Really? We, we have some of these being raised at a hydroponics facility just outside of Rich, Richmond, Virginia um, at uh, Woodburn Hydroponics. And these fish are actually in a recirculating tank just like you saw, right. except uh, the water from the tank is being pumped over gravel beds to raise cut flowers and tomatoes and strawberries and then the water runs back into the tank again. So it's, it's a... Uh, well, we've caught, we've caught flounder, we've caught summer flounder way up in Hopewell before. So I guess flounder pretty much can be... We call them urihaline. They can go to lots of different they salinities. They can go a lot of salinities. A we've lot. had southern flounder in research trials in Blacksburg that were also in fresh water that did quite well. Really? Um, there's a lot of potential for cultivating marine fish in brackish or fresh water. Okay. We just haven't figured it out, all out yet. Well, listen, this is absolutely fascinating. This is open to tours right anytime. here. Anytime. Anytime, downtown City Hampton, Virginia Tech. Uh, yeah. You've got a contact number. Well, you just call the 800 number, tourism 800-800-2202. Yeah. This is absolutely fascinating. Bring your kids. Left that They've kids. got to see this. And uh, again, this is really cool because we're really taking a first look at something that is going to be gigantic down the road, just a few years. And all the research is being done right here at Virginia Tech. Are y'all working with other colleges or is it pretty much just you guys? We work uh, We work across the uh, country and in fact even overseas internationally on the flounder. Okay. Um, we work a lot with uh, Europe and Asia. Um, it's There's a lot of work that needs to be done so we really collaborate with a okay. lot of groups. Uh, uh, we work with uh, a little bit with VIMS here in Virginia. We work with University of Texas. 
uh, University of Miami and colleagues. So it's a collaborative effort on a national level. Well, we appreciate the tour. Thanks a lot, Thank Mike. You so much. It's been a blast. Great work. Have a good day. And now it's time for today's tip. We're going to show you one of these rigs we're fishing today. <clears throat> In the Chesapeake Bay, tandem rigs work extremely well. And this is a great way to run a rig and they will not get tangled. You're not going to believe the size of this, but this is what we call a mojo. It's what a lot of people call a mojo. On the bottom, and this thing's running right on the bottom, 30 feet of water. <clears throat> we have a little bit of grass on it. As Captain Bill says, you want to be sure that you check your baits for grass, because fish won't, they just won't hit them if they're full of grass. But this is a very big bait. And you folks at home might be thinking, gee, you don't even catch fish this big, you know what I'm saying? As big as the bait is. But we're talking about 30 to 50 pound rockfish. You have to fish big baits, bigger baits, bigger fish. And believe it or not, a 15 pound rockfish will inhale this. I filleted rockfish in about the 15 pound class with fish bigger, the croaker bigger than this in their stomachs. So this is a great bait, yellow chartreuse tail. <clears throat> and then up here, we've got a three-way. And then I've just got a storm lure, a small shad. You don't want to have a real heavy lure for your second lure because you do want to have some separation. Look at this, we put it in the water. You can see, see how well those baits are separated. You've got the one lure that's going to go straight to the bottom. That mojo will go straight to the bottom. And then this other lure, the smaller one, once I set this down, it's going to probably be a good five feet away, and that's what you want. A lot of times these rockfish will get very agitated, or you will, you will agitate them by bouncing the bottom. They like disturbances on the water, and a lot of times that will definitely cause them to start feeding. So already, try to look at that top bait. You can see how well it's separating and going behind that mojo. So we'll just take it straight to the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, that's it. It's there. We're done. It'll just bounce along there. And the good news about fishing these kind of baits is, hey, Mike, when, when the rod goes down, you have a big fish, you know? Again, right, we're, right. Fishing, we're fishing for big rock fish. We're not fishing for schooly fish. We're not fishing, we're not fishing for the kind of fish that Captain Bill likes to fish for all the time. We're not, we're not, we're not doing those today, right? We're just going for the hogs. It's a, it's a, it, it is a rockfish. It's a small one, but it's a rockfish. They built the top. They built the top. Look at that. This is our tandem bay rig. Mike, bring one in and step back, and I'll, I'll hand line him in. All right. Come on back. Look at this rig. He hit the bottom rig. He hit the spoon. Look at it. He hit the spoon. Oh, nice rockfish. Yeah. Not bad for our first fish. First fish of the day. Yeah. Hold on now. There you go. Beautiful Chesapeake Bay rockfish. Tide is just now starting to change, and we're getting the skunk out of the boat. Now, we want some about four times the size of that. But if you are going to be eating fish, we're going to do a little cooking thing tonight. It's hard to beat this size. It really is. Beautiful rockfish. Very good. That mojo rig. With a split, split on it's good, isn't it? Double hump and growling. Yeah, in a little, little while we're going to show you how we're doing these rigs. Breaking water? Yeah, this one might be a little better than the other one. I hope we run into some bluefish. Mike doesn't get as excited about bluefish as I do. But boy, oh, I love bluefish. Love them. Love them. He's going to have a lot of water. I think we drowned him. <laughs> you don't need a net, do you? I'll tell you, you, go out here and you fish for a couple hours, and you think it's slow. Be careful with that stretch now. But the tide was slack. Right now, the tide is just beginning to turn. You got it? Oh, he is a little better. Look at that. Yeah, Mike, nothing wrong with that. Look at him. Woo! Boy, I'm telling. Let me get the pliers. Look, you're getting bigger. Yeah, definitely getting bigger. 
They're getting bigger. Oh, they're going to turn on once the tide They're going to turn on big. Well, the tide's just now starting to change. So we're going to be on them. What do you think? He may be a throwback in a little while. Uh, we're going to throw you back. <laughs>